Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm Alice McKnight. I'm a performance engineer at Etsy, and I'm here to tell you about crafting performance alerting tools. So to get a feel for where everybody in this room is, who here uses Nagios or a similar system to monitor any of their systems? Yeah, OK. So a lot of hands. <laughs> who here uh, monitors specifically the performance of their systems? Yeah, OK, great. Fewer hands, but still quite a few. Um, so whether you're not in either of those boats, you're just trying to start off monitoring or trying to de develop uh, performance monitoring, or if you're already monitoring a lot and you want to improve your monitoring uh, workflow, this will be a good talk for you. Um, I'm going to go over how we did all of those steps at Etsy. So a quick overview of how this talk is going to go. I'll start, telling you, start by telling you what things looked like before we had this monitoring in place how we went about adding monitoring for our page's performance, how we iterated on that alerting and the tools that we used to respond to alerts, where that's gotten us today and the benefits that we've seen come out of that. And then at the end, I'll tell you about some things that we're really looking forward to do to continue improving on these things in the future. And hopefully at the end, there will be some time for questions. So if you haven't heard of Etsy before, Etsy is a global online uh, marketplace for Handmade goods, vintage goods, and crafting supplies, which, as you can tell maybe from my slides, that's really a great place for me to be working. Um, I'm on the performance team at Etsy, and the performance team at Etsy is tasked with building out our site's uh, performance infrastructure, monitoring and tracking our uh, site's performance and the performance of our apps, and also helping the product teams who work on those pages understand their product's performance and how their changes are affecting that performance. So if you've heard anything at all about Etsy as a tech company, probably something that you've heard is that we really like graphs. We have a saying that goes, if it moves, we'll track it. And sometimes we'll monitor something even if it's not moving, just in case it decides to make a run for it later. So we've been graphing our site's performance for a long time. Today I'm going to be talking specifically about how we added monitoring for our backend. So I'll go over a little bit uh, how we get those backend performance metrics in. I do want to say again, even though some of this is specific to performance or Etsy's stack running PHP, these ideas should really work for you no matter what stack you're running or what you want to monitor. So back to those backend performance metrics. As soon as you uh, request a page from Etsy.com and we start running PHP to generate that page for you, we'll start a timer. And this timer will run through the entire execution of PHP. And when PHP is finished executing, then we'll have the amount of time that it took to run PHP to generate that page. We store this number in our web logs. Oh, there it is. And then we put it into the web logs. And those are later processed by a system called Logster. Logster was developed at Etsy a while ago. It's open source, so you can find it on our GitHub page. Basically, what Logster does is it'll go through your logs continuously and pick out key pieces of information that you've told it to watch out for. So in our case, we're looking for that PHP time metric. So we get a lot of visits to each page on our site, more than one per second. So in order to store this in any kind of a time series database, uh, we'll need to get some aggregations of all of these pieces of data that Logster is seeing. So we've configured Logster to run uh, in 60 second uh, time periods. And then after that 60 seconds is up, it'll take all of the things that it saw and give us these aggregations. So we're getting things like the number of visits that Logster saw, the average performance for those visits, the median 95th percentile performance of those, these, of those visits. And then we've told Logster to send that information onto Graphite so we can have these beautiful graphs. Uh, so this is a Graphite graph of one of our pages back end performance. You can see that we're tracking the median that's shown in red and also the 95th percentile shown in green. The median time gives us an idea of what a middle of the road kind of load time for this page looks like, while the 95th percentile time gives us an idea of what some of our slower requests are looking like and what the users who are getting those load times are experiencing. Once we have these graphs, we can add them to our dashboards. This here is Etsy's deploy dashboard. The deploy dashboard is a collection of graphs that we think are important for people to look at as they're making changes to the site. Each of these vertical lines uh, on this dashboard represents a deploy to the site. We do con continuous deployment, so you will see a lot of uh, these deploy lines on even a small one hour graph. And these are really helpful in helping us match up changes in these metrics to deploys. 
So here, if you're looking at this graph, you see the spike in homepage performance. Maybe that is uh, related to the deploy that went out right before that, and this will help people understand how their changes are affecting any of these metrics or specifically performance. This way, if somebody's pushing out a change and they see that it makes a page slower, they know that they have a problem and that they need to go back and make their changes more performant. So this is really helpful in helping us catch regressions as we're deploying. But we weren't catching all of the regressions. There are a lot of graphs on this page, so it was unreasonable to expect somebody who's pushing code to look at all of them. They might pick out a couple that seem like they're important and related to their changes. But if you don't notice that you, or don't think that you might be pushing out a performance regression, so you don't look at these perf graphs, you might miss that regression going out. We needed monitoring to help us keep track of our page's performance and understand when regressions were going out so that we knew to go back and fix them. So we started thinking about ways that we could have this kind of monitoring. And we started generating some email reports to help us get a feel for how our page or how our site was performing. The first of these was this slowest five pages per week uh, email report. This report does exactly what you think. Um, at the end of each week, it would look at all of the pages on the site and find the five slowest pages. It would put those on a list and send them to the performance team in this email with uh, their 95th percentile in median performance over the course of the week. This was a good start. We were getting some insight into how our pages were performing, and we knew which pages are slow. But this wasn't quite what we were going for. For one, we only got some insight into the smallest part of our site. We were missing out on understanding the performance of the faster pages, which arguably are the pages that we care more about since we already took the time to optimize them and make them fast. Additionally, this wasn't a very actionable report. Um, often the pages that we saw in this report would be the same this week as they were the past week because no page got slower en slow enough to kick any of them out. So it was basically the same list of five pages each week, and we couldn't, we, there wasn't anything that we could respond to when we got this report. So we decided to try again. This is our second attempt, the regressions report. Uh, and this is really exciting because it's actually telling us when pages have gotten slower. It's telling us which pages have regressed. The way that this query worked is that every night it would go through and look at each of the pages on the site check out that page's performance in the past 24 hours and compare that to that page's performance in the previous seven days. If the page were significantly slower in the past day than it had been in the previous week over some threshold that we set in the query, it would be added to this list and we would know that it had regressed. And this was really exciting because we were starting to get the kind of insight into our site's performance that we were looking for. But this also wasn't ideal. There were some issues with it. First, it wouldn't catch small or slow creep regressions. And this is just because of the way that the query was working. If a page is getting a little bit slower each day as you're adding new code to it or building out a feature just a little bit of, at a time, then the historical data that this query was using to look and see whether a page had actually gotten slower was getting slower day, slower day by day as well. So we would never get over that threshold and that page would never be added to this report. Secondly, it was difficult to tune this report. We have a lot of pages on Etsy, and many of them have different performance patterns than some of the other pages that we have. So we were using the same query to find regressions for all of the pages on our site. And sometimes, with a page that had a weird performance pattern that led to it being slower some days than others um, because of that page's seasonality, that page would be detected as having had a regression and added to the report, and then when we looked into that page's performance later, we'd find out that really it was just kind of a false alarm, that page hadn't actually experienced a regression. Because of this, we had to do a lot of additional investigation once we got this regressions report, even to verify that the pages listed on the report had actually gotten slower. And once that was done, we had to do a lot of manual work to figure out what had happened on that page to make it slower, and to figure out how to fix it. These things were leading to alert fatigue on our team. We were receiving a lot of alerts, but some of them were false alarms. And then it uh, took a lot of work to respond to all of those alerts. So this wasn't ideal. So we started thinking about what we could do to make the situation better. One thing that we could do is enforcing, uh, start enforcing better graph watching during deploys. 
we could make sure that every time you're pushing code to the site, you check all of the performance graphs that we have listed on our dashboards and make sure none of them got slower. Or maybe we could change the alerting mechanism. Maybe we could find a new way of uh, querying our page's performance across the site to figure out which ones had gotten slower. Um, we could create tools to help us investigate regressions once they came in to cut down on the amount of work or the difficulty of the, the work that it took to respond to a regression. Or maybe we could change the alert format. Maybe we could add some things to the emails that we were getting to give us clues as to what was going on. We ended up going with all of these except for the first one. This is because enforcing better graph watching didn't seem feasible. Uh, you can't really look at all of those graphs every time you push code. It would be really bad for morale. It's just not good. But we were kind of desperate, so we went for the rest of these. We started out with working on changing the system that we were using to monitor our pages. We ended up going, unsurprisingly, maybe, with a system called Nagios. This was a pretty good pick for us because a lot of teams at Etsy were already using it to monitor this, their systems. Operations, of course, was using it to monitor the actual machines that were running to power the site. But additionally, other teams around the company were using it to monitor the services that they built to help Etsy run or to help other people around Etsy do their jobs. So the cool thing that Nagios provides is fast and fine-tuned alerting. The way that it does this is by allowing you to specify how to check each service that you want to monitor by letting you write the script that checks that service yourself. So if you remember from when I was talking about where our metrics come from, all of our backend performance metrics live in Graphite. And so we ended up using a script that we have at Etsy, also on GitHub, that will check the uh, data stored in those Graphite graphs that generate those graphs to see whether a page had regressed. The way that the script works is basically you take the graphite URL of a metric that you want to monitor, and then you pick out a warning and a critical threshold that you also give to that script. The script goes in, uh, takes the past five minutes of data from that graphite metric that you gave it, and takes the average of those, and then compares that to the warning and critical thresholds. If it's over either of those thresholds, then the alert will fire, and the performance team will get an email. So to configure Nagios for these pages, you need to set up an individual Nagios uh, service check for each service that you want to monitor. And for us, picking out uh, thresholds for our pages, that meant that we needed individual thresholds for if every page that we wanted to monitor on the site. So at this point in time, we had 40 pages that we wanted to monitor based on the amount of traffic that they were getting. Trying to think about how we could pick out thresholds for all of these pages was actually pretty daunting. Um, I tried to do it manually at first and quickly realized that that wasn't going to work. Uh, also, we wanted a system in place to help us consistently pick new thresholds for pages that maybe would be built in the future that we wanted, would want to start monitoring. And so we started creating tools to help us understand our performance monitoring setup. The tool that ended up being really useful to us is this tool that we made called PerfNag. PerfNag stands for Performance Nagios Alerts. I guess I wasn't feeling very creative the day that I named it, but now we're stuck with it, so there it is. This was an in-browser tool, and what it did was for each page that you wanted to create a new uh, monitoring setup for, it would give you a graph of the 95th percentile performance of that page. That's the metric that we wanted to track. You can see in that graph these two uh, vertical lines. Those are thresholds that were picked out using some math and recommended to us by the tool as some like maybe starting points for warning and critical thresholds that we would eventually use to monitor this page. The math that did this was pretty simple. We know that we want to be alerted when a page's performance goes above its normal levels. So we know that we want the warning threshold to be a little bit above that page's normal performance performance levels. So we'll just take the 95th percentile performance of that page over the past week to account for weekly seasonality, multiply that by 1.1 to bump it up a little bit, and that's your recommended warning threshold. The critical threshold, we know we want to be a pretty good deal above that warning threshold, so we'll multiply the warning threshold by, by 1.6 and recommend that as the critical threshold. Now these were really good in like start as far as starting points go for these thresholds, but they weren't always quite on point. So we had some controls down here so that the person using the tool could change the warning and critical thresholds and see that reflected in the graph above. 
In this way, we were able to pick some really well-tuned thresholds because we were able to see the thresholds that we were picking and how they related to the page's actual performance. Once this was done, the operator could use this copy configuration button to get the definition for this new uh, service for this page, deploy, uh, do a Nagios deploy, and start receiving alerts. I do want to look a little bit at this Nagios configuration for our alerts. A lot of this is pretty standard. If you used Nagios before, you'll probably recognize some of it. If you want to look up any of these terms, they're available on the Nagios documentation online. I just want to call out a couple of specific parameters that ended up being important to us. For starters, this check interval is the number of minutes that go in between checks of a service when the service is performing well, when it's in an OK state. When a performance goes into a warning or a critical state, then these next two parameters come into play, the retry interval and the max check attempts. The retry interval is the number of minutes that go by between checks of that service when it's doing poorly. And then the max check attempts is the number of times that Nagios will try to check that service to see whether it has recovered before it sends out an alert. These ended up being really important to us because we see this kind of thing, uh, this kind of performance pattern on our pages sometimes. Some user is using this page in a different way than we normally see. The performance goes up for a little bit and then it pretty immediately comes back down. That's not the kind of thing that we want to know about because we won't respond to it. By the time we're able to look into it, it'll have fixed itself. So we ended up giving ourselves a pretty long amount of time between a service going into a bad state and between then and getting the notification so that we start looking into the alert. Finally, I just want to talk about this notification interval. The notification interval is the number of minutes that will go in between the first notification that a service is not OK and subsequent, service, or subsequent notifications that that service is still in that state. For a lot of people who monitor systems where it's really important to respond right away to a problem, this is set to something really low so that you can make sure that you're hearing your pager or that you actually get out of bed to look and see what's going on. But on our team, a lot of the issues that we're responding to, you can like take a little bit of time to respond to. Uh, so we have this set so that we only receive one notification a day when a page is performing poorly. Using this PerfNag tool to help us visualize our performance alerting helped us develop really well-tuned alerts. This way, when alerts, when alerts ended up coming in, uh, instead of before with the regressions report, we knew that the alerts were real and that we had to start responding to them. So let's take a look at one of those email reports. This is what it looked like when we started getting them in our inboxes. There's a ton of information here. Our eyes are drawn to the capitalized, bolded, and red words on this page, which mostly are just telling us that there's a problem and that it's site impacting. It's all kind of scary, but it's not really giving us an idea of what's actually going on. The most important information to us is buried right here. What we really want to know about is where the page is performing right now and being able to compare that to where we expect it to be performing based on its warning and critical thresholds. We needed alerts that would help us understand the problem. And so next, we started changing our alert format. To do this, we used a tool called Nagios Herald. It was developed at Etsy, again, a little bit before we started working on this on the performance team. It's been open source, and you can find it on GitHub. And Nagios Herald is basically a tool to do just that, to change the format of your uh, Nagios alerts and add context to them. So we started using this tool to add important pieces of information to the alerts that were coming into our inboxes. Let's take a look at one of those. When I get an alert, the first thing that I see is the subject. Here, the subject is nice and succinct. It says, home performance is at warning levels. Already, we are a lot less stressed out because it's not yelling at us so much, and we have a good idea of what's going on. We then can open the alert to get more details. The first line here tells us how the page is performing and how far above its warning or critical threshold, which, whichever one it's alerting on, it is. And then, of course, my favorite part of this email is the graphs because I work at Etsy. Uh, these are really helpful in uh, showing us how that page is performing uh, and comparing that to how it normally performs. So this was a good start. We were already understanding what was going on a lot better when we got alerts in, but we still found that we were trying to manually answer some questions that we thought could be included in these emails really easily. So we took another pass. 
You can see that we've added to these graphs the warning and critical thresholds that Nagios uses to monitor this page. And we also expanded the time of the previously 60 minute graph to a four hour view of the performance of this page so that we have some more context there. Down here, we've added some additional information. We first have a link out to that PerfMag tool so that somebody getting this email can dig into that page's performance a little bit more deeply. I'll, I'll say more on that later. And then we have this list of features that have changed on this page in the past hour. At Etsy, we turn a lot of features on or off or ramp them up or down using configuration flags. And we can link those config flags to specific pages. So having a list of features that have changed running on this page is really useful because it's basically a list of changes that we can look into to see whether they might have caused this regression. So this was really good uh, general context for all of the pages on our site. But for some of our pages, there were specific pieces of context that were really essential in understanding that page's performance, but that wouldn't make any sense in the context of the rest of their pages. As an example on our cart page, we call out on the back end to a third party payment processor. And sometimes that third party payment processor gets slow and that makes the cart page slower as well. So we were able to add this specific context to those specific pages. So here is the alert for that cart purchase page. And we've added the graph of that third party payment processors uh, time to this alert so that in this case, we can see really clearly, this is probably something that was caused by that getting slower rather than anything that we were changing on our side of things. And in this case, the performance team isn't actually in charge of monitoring that third party payment processor. The payments team tracks that and responds to it when it breaks or gets slow. So we would get this email, really quickly be able to tell that it was not something that we were going to respond to and then just go on with our days. But if we were getting the email, reading it, and then not doing anything to respond to it, we didn't need to get this email in the first place. We were able to use something called Nagio service dependencies to set up our alerts so that we got only alerts that were actionable by the performance team. These Nagio service dependencies are built into Nagios. Basically, they're a way of saying, in this specific case, hey, Nagios, I want to monitor this cart page's performance, but it relies on this third party service's performance. When that gets slow, I know that the cart service will be bad, but I won't be able to do anything to respond to it. So in that case, don't give me an alert. This is really cut down on the number of inactionable alerts that we're seeing on our team and in our inboxes. So, so far, we've gone from having no monitoring, we've set up alerts that are really well tuned to each of our pages, and we've added context to our emails, to our alert emails, to help us understand more quickly what's going on when we do get an alert. The next thing that we do as we respond to alerts is to start investigating to see what caused that regression and how we might be able to fix it. So the next thing that we started iterating on were those tools that we use to do that investigation. If you remember the PerfNag tool from before, this ended up being a really useful tool as we were doing this investigation. So we've made some changes to make that even more helpful to us. For starters, these are no longer recommended thresholds. If we are actively monitoring a page, then they will represent the actual warning and critical pages that Nagio, or sorry, warning and critical thresholds that Nagio is using to monitor that page. This PerfNag tool isn't just one uh, page at a time. We actually list all of the pages that we're monitoring on this tool. And when a page is in an, a warning or a critical state, we'll bring it all the way to the top of the tool and change the background color for that page. In this way, somebody who's using the tool can really easily get an idea of which pages are doing poorly and how the entire site is performing. We also added some more context to help us understand a regression that was happening on a page. So at the top and the bottom, we've added a couple of controls to help us split out that page's performance into different groups. For instance, we can see desktop versus mobile requests, get and post. Uh, we can display the median on this graph as well as the 95th percentile, and then have that performance split out by different users. This is helpful in showing us what the nature of the performance regression is. 
Uh, for instance, if we split it out by signed in users versus signed out users, and we see that the regression is only affecting the performance of this page for signed in users, then we can start thinking that maybe a personalization feature shipped recently. That's the kind of thing would, that would only affect signed in users. So these are really helpful in helping us understand what kind of change might have caused this problem. We have some additional controls down at the bottom here as well. This historical toggle shows the performance of this page on the same day one week ago. When we're investigating regressions, this will help us understand how the page's performance patterns have changed and also, again, help us understand the severity of the regression. And finally, over here, we have this deploys button, which will show deploys that have gone out in the time window of this graph. And in this way, it's really easy to link a regression to a deploy <laughs> if a deploy went out right before the regression started so that we know which code we should be looking at. Having this improved context in our alerts and improving our alerting investigation tools made this investigation a lot easier and faster. Because every single team at Etsy is kind of in charge of their own product's performance, a lot of uh, the process of investigating and fixing a performance regression involves talking to other teams, and this made that a lot easier. Instead of doing a lot of work to manually find a graph that demonstrated the regression or to add that context that was in those emails uh, ourselves, we could just start using that Nagios alert to start that conversation over email about what might have gone wrong on a page and have that context there already for us. Or we could use the perpnag tool, find a graph that worked, copy the link to that, and paste it in IRC, the group chat that we use at Etsy where a lot of performance regression discussion happens. But we realized that we could actually automate that as well. So we have an IRC bot at Etsy called IRC Cat. It's actually a really fitting name because we mostly use it to look at cat gifts. <laughs> but as it turns out, it actually has some real work applications as well. So we've added a command to that bot to bring up the performance graph with those Nagios thresholds of any given page that we're monitoring. In this way, we can really easily start conversations in the performance team about neat uh, performance patterns or about regressions. And we didn't only use this to talk to other people on the performance team. We can also use this tool to talk to other people in the performance channel who are on other teams about performance issues. So in this case, we're using this tool to pull up a graph of a page that has obviously gotten a lot worse performance-wise. And I'm really easily, to start, easily able to start a conversation with Gio, who's on the team that owns and works on this page about what might have happened, and we're really easily able to diagnose the problem and start working on fixing it. As we started using this tool to communicate about performance with people from other teams, they started to learn about how to use the tool themselves. So here I'm using the tool to bring up a graph of a page that got a lot faster because Spike pushed out a performance improvement for it. And Spike is learning about how to use this perfnag command to investigate the performance of our pages. As people from other teams started learning about how to use this tool, they started using it on their own to investigate their page's performance. So here in the payments channel, completely separate from the performance team's channel, we see two people from the payments team using the tool to look into the performance of one of their pages. Having this improved context in our alerts and improving our alerting tools made cross-team collaboration when responding to these regressions a lot more straightforward and easier. And it also, as you saw in that last slide, when people were using the tool to look into their page's performance, increased awareness and interest in other teams in their page's performance. So we went from having no monitoring at all to developing some really well-tuned alerts for all of our pages, adding context to our alerts as they were coming in, and then improving our tools, which has gotten to a place, us to a place now where we're catching a lot of regressions, and then we're able to respond and investigate them really quickly with the help of other people on different teams. But we're not done yet. There are a couple of things that we're planning on working on really soon or are working on right now that we're really excited about, so I wanna share them with you. The first of these is alerting on improvements. At Etsy, we really love to celebrate performance wins. This is an example of that. This is our performance hero dashboard. It's displayed on a big monitor by the desks that the performance team sits at. 
And on this dashboard, we recognize someone or a group of people who have been able to find a performance improvement and ship that out to the site or to the apps. If we were able to automatically be notified when pages got faster, then we would be able to celebrate so much more. And we would also be able to keep our regression thresholds more in line with the actual performance of a page. Currently, if a page gets faster, we might not know about it, and then it could get slower again, but not slow enough to go back over those warning and critical thresholds. So that would be really helpful. Uh, another thing is that we could add even more context to those emails. For instance, if we were able to figure out automatically which teams have worked on that page recently and include a list of those, uh, those teams in that email, that would cut down on some of the mental overhead that we have to go through. I'm really interested in seeing the history of a specific page's alert so that we're able to recognize patterns in our alerting that we might not be picking up on now. We could integrate this more fully into our workflow. So if we're able to come up with the teams that have uh, changed a page recently uh, as it's alerting, then we could maybe automatically CC them in those emails as they're coming in so that they can start working on the problem right away. Or maybe we could alert people who have deployed code recently when a page regresses so that they can start checking in on their changes to see whether they might have caused that regression. Finally, this is set up on our back end and it's been working for us really well there. But we could uh, make this alerting and monitoring system more comprehensive across the rest, of, the rest of our site. We could be using the same setup on our front end or to take a look at our mobile apps or use it in our API. And we are planning on doing that, so we're excited there. Um, the way that we got here was by iteratively using context to improve our tools. When we began this process, or any time that we kind of found ourselves at a stopping point, we would look around um, and think about the questions that we were asking ourselves and having to answer manually whenever we were responding to an alert. And then we would think about how we could automatically include those answers in our tools or in the alerts themselves so that we wouldn't have to answer them next time. Uh, by doing this little by little and just adding a little bit more on each time we get an alert, we've ended up with a monitoring system that is really well tuned to our team and our team's needs and uh, workflow for responding to these regressions. That is all I have for you today. There are some links to the open source resources that I mentioned in this talk. I'll be posting these slides later. If you want to find them, you can follow me on Twitter. Or if you don't use Twitter, you can just check out my tweets right after this in the next hour and then be done with it. Um, and I think we have quite a bit of time for questions. So yeah. Uh, so the, the metrics, the question was, um, do we run this monitoring on like uh, non-prod environments or is it only in production? Um, so for this monitoring, we're actually monitoring real user data that comes in through production. We have a couple of, we don't really have monitoring set up on like the actual performance of our pages in dev. Part of that reason is that our dev hardware is, of course, very different than our production hardware. But we do have tools that we use to uh, inspect and analyze performance uh, synthetically when you're in the dev environment. For instance, XHProf is one of the tools that we use there. Uh, yeah, red shirt. Yeah, good question. So the question was thinking about adding more context to the alerts and tools, uh, and specifically like the signed in and signed out breakdown. Um, is that something that we already had or that we had to ask somebody to go back and add? Um, so there are a lot of things to talk about here. Uh, Logster is really neat in that you can actually, when you're writing a Logster script, uh, it's really straightforward, so don't be uh, scared off of Logster just because I said that you have to write a script. It's a really straightforward script, but it also gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, so that breakdown that we have uh, in our metrics into like signed in and signed out users was actually already in Logster because we knew like 
when we were setting up this, mo or this graphing a while ago for our performance of our pages, we knew that that was like a pretty important breakdown to have. So that was actually already in there. Some of the other things, um, a so if we were trying to get another split out from that Logster script, it would be really easy to go back in and add that, although we do take into account like the amount of space that that's taking up if we have like eight different aggregations. Um, so that's a consideration. But we also use uh, an Elk stack to, mon like, to explore our web logs. So things like the desktop and mobile breakdown or get versus post requests, we actually go into Logstash and we display them that way. So there are like a lot of different ways that we can look and dig more deeply into our metrics. Cool. Um, person in the back-ish, middle back. Um, did you, uh, you know, there's issues with not just scaling. Did you make separate Yeah, the question was, um, there are issues with scaling Nagios. Did we make a separate Nagios instance? Honestly, I think at Etsy we haven't run into any Nagio scaling problems. I think we have two Nagios clusters running, um, and we have like a ton of checks, and we've not ever run into any problems. Um, so no, we didn't have to <laughs> do anything special around there. Yes. Um, do you use like just basic thresholds in Nagios? Have you ever done looked at doing something like computing a confidence interval, so that you could say? Yeah. So the question was, we use just like a straight warning and critical threshold for our alerts. Have we considered doing something maybe more complicated? In this case, the question was specifically about like adding a confidence with that. Um, we haven't done that. So uh, a lot of this process has been doing like just a little bit of, at a time. And that has allowed us to get in a pretty small amount of time a really, really useful system. Uh, there. Having a more uh, evolved alert setup for us uh, might be pretty useful because like, we can only detect either like, really large regressions or regressions that happen when the seasonality of the page is at the top right now because that's like when it'll go over the threshold and it's one threshold for the entire day. So having something a bit more sophisticated would definitely be cool to look into. We haven't gotten that far yet, but we do think about it. Yeah. Um, orange backpack. Yes, you. <laughs> um, I have the the magic alert you were showing, is that coming from synthetic tech or is tied with the, the real time data you get from the log? Uh, yeah, OK. So the question was, is the Nagios alert that we're getting coming from a synthetic check or like real time data that we're getting from the web logs? I mean, it's like. I wouldn't call it synthetic. This is actually like the real user data that we're getting in uh, into our graphite graphs, maybe on like a one minute delay because Logster has to wait for a minute before it gets to those aggregations. But the Nagios alerts are configured for our team to actually wait a little bit before alerting us because like I was saying, some of our pages spike and that's just normal. So this isn't like our alerting isn't quite real time, but it definitely could be. So if your team needs something that's a little bit more instant, then yeah, that could totally work too. So you mean the data is kept from the log files? Yeah, the data is pulled in from the log files, aggregations are made, and so the graphs that you saw are like only 60 seconds uh, off from real time. Yeah. Yes? Okay, the question was, is our perf monitoring still separate from our ops monitoring, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? So I didn't, our ops team does a lot of monitoring separate from what we're doing. Um, they tend to pick up on a lot of issues that are, so like the performance team's issues are separate from what the ops team would deal with, and that's why our monitoring is kind of separate. But we have found um, through like starting to get these alerts and notice, noticing patterns that there are kind of two different alerts that we get. So the first kind of alert is when one or like five pages get a little bit slower, then that's like somebody pushed out code and it slowed those pages down. Sometimes we see like eight or 10 or 12 pages at once going like critical. And actually, a lot of the time, those are actually like something that ops or infrastructure would have to deal with and that the perf team couldn't respond to. Right now, we've actually started uh, creating aggregate alerts. 
Um, so using a script that, instead of just checking the graphite data for one graph, checks on all of the Nagio services that we have on the performance team and will tell us if 10 pages are critical or something like that. Um, we're actually still working on tuning this and playing around with this. It's like two weeks old. Um, but we think that this could be really exciting because then we could alert the operations or core platform teams if suddenly like a lot of our pages are doing really poorly and that way they would know that something's going wrong if they don't know already. Anybody else? Um, how do we get people to, to subscribe to the alerts that are coming in? Uh, to the work that we're doing as a performance team? Um, yeah, that's actually a pretty big question. Uh, so performance has been kind of, getting a performance culture at Etsy has been an ongoing process from like at least five years ago. Um, we've had a performance team for quite a long time, although it started out as one person and grew into like, now we have five people and we kind of have a sister team that also works on performance on the front end and infrastructure there. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it, it takes quite a while. Uh, if you want to check out Lara Hogan, who is my manager on the performance team, has like a narrative on YouTube that she did about trying to get buy-in per performance from people higher up in the company, and we found that that's been really useful too. Yes? Who writes the checks? Sorry? Who writes those checks? Yeah, good question. Who watches for those checks or those um, the alerts that we're getting? Yeah, so those alerts are by default sent to the performance team, and then right now we're like typically forwarding them and like having an email chain that both we and the team that works on that page specifically uh, are involved in, and we start talking there. Um, but we also make the email uh, delist that these go out to uh, available for other people to subscribe. So one workflow that we have is that some people who work on like, say if I were working on the cart checkout page that you saw, I could subscribe to that list and filter out everything that's not the cart checkout page. So that way I'm getting alerts on my page. Do we have more time? Or are we good? Okay, yes. We're, uh, that's all, but I will like be around the conference so you can come ask me questions later. Thanks for coming.